Okay, today's key question is how do we convert electrical energy into rotational motion? And the way we're going to do that is uh, we are going to use an electric motor. Specifically, we're going to use a uh, brushed DC electric motor. That's a particular type of motor. And uh, it uses direct current. And we have a circuit here. You can see that direct current flows in a continuous loop. Alternating current uh, flows uh, in a uh, sine wave. And it goes back and forth at 60 hertz, or 60 times a second. So our DC uh, motor will use direct current. And um, inside the motor, there is a little shaft. And that shaft is called an axle. And around the axle are two bearings. So and the bearings are connected to the motor housing. Uh, and they support the uh, central part of the motor. And uh, on the outside of the motor, there are these two contacts. And those two contacts uh, conduct electricity down inside the motor to two pins. And those pins are connected to copper springs, which have carbon contacts on them. And those push against the commutator. The commutator is a little drum at the top of the axle. And uh, that drum is divided into sections. And it conducts electricity down to the field. Uh, which is made up of all these different sections. And uh, the field is copper windings around a soft iron core. And then on the top and bottom of the motor, or the both sides of the motor, are two permanent magnets. Those two permanent magnets resist the armature as it becomes uh, electromagnetized and causes it to repel the magnet and spin around. Uh, the commutator allows the power to come in from one side and create a, a magnetic field that resists the south side. And then as the power is leaving on the north side, it resists, it, the, the field flips, and it resists the north side, and the power goes out on the other side. And so this, it's this flipping that causes the rotational motion of the motor. We've cut a section of the motor out so you can see what's inside of it, and we can explain kind of how it works and where the electricity is going and what it's doing. So if you look at the outside here of the motor, you can see there's a plastic outer housing. This plastic outer housing has a word in it. It says Mabuchi. That is the name of the manufacturer for the motor. They make a variety of small electric motors. And you can see there's two tabs here. Those are the tabs that the electricity flows through. And uh, in this housing, there are a number of dif different holes. And those holes will let, will let air flow through the motor to prevent it from overheating. And uh, there's a uh, little bearing in the center that holds the axle in place. And that allows the motor to spin freely. And uh, so it, it holds that. And uh, again, the, uh, the housing here keeps these contacts from shorting against the outer housing. Since uh, this plastic piece, since this is plastic, it keeps these from shorting against the outer housing. Now, the outer housing is made out of stamped steel, and it's coated with uh, zinc and uh, that prevents it from oxidizing. The stamp steel has holes in it for a number of different reasons. Uh, this hole here is to allow for ventilation. And these two holes are actually uh, tabs that are pressed against the uh, permanent magnets that are on the inside of the uh, motor. You can see here's one of the permanent magnets here. So there's a permanent, there's a south pole and a north pole magnet in the motor. And when these two uh, pieces of steel are pressed against those, they squeeze against a, a spring on the other side and it keeps the magnets against the outside of the motor. If you look on this part of the motor, you can see more ventilation holes. And then there are some holes here for some screws to mount the motor in a housing. And there's another, uh, there's a brass fitting here and another bearing that allows for the uh, axle to turn. And then there's another brass fitting here that supports our, uh, basically is a, a friction fit with our propeller for our hair dryer. Now we, of course, cut the propeller apart so we could get to the to the brass fitting and see what it looked like. All right, so uh, the electricity flows into the motor, comes in through this tab, flows through this pin, and then through this uh, copper uh, spring, and then it flows through this, this carbon electrode. It's called a brush. And the brush conducts electricity down to this uh, carbon, uh, I should say, down to this uh, copper uh, drum which is uh, segmented. It has five segments in this motor, and that drum is called a commutator. And so it commutes the electricity to the armature. And it's segmented because as the power flows through the uh, commutator, 
it it uh, it flows through in in one direction, or it flows through the commutator and down to the armature, and then back out of the commutator on the other side through the other brush. And when it's flowing out, the direction of the field flips. So uh, it's important that that commutator has different sections for that reason. So the power flows from the commutator down to these uh, these iron plates that are stacked up and wrapped with copper wire and uh, those iron plates uh, act as electromagnets and they push against the permanent magnets. So here's a, there's a permanent north pole magnet on this side and a permanent south pole magnet on the other side. So when the power flows through uh, each one of these poles, they're called uh, ma uh, field poles or um, motor poles, when it, the power flows through each one of these poles in the armature, it resists the uh, magnet on this side, flips over to the other side, because the power is flowing out and through the, uh, through the uh, brush on the other side, the field direction changes. And so the permanent magnet on the other side is a south pole. It resists that magnet. And then it comes around to the other side, gets more electricity, and resists this magnet. And the process continues, and that's what causes the motor to continue to spin. So that's how our motor and our hairdryer works.